For our last story tonight, let me begin with a difficult but basic question. What constitutes rape? You may say forced sex. But in legal terms, it's not that simple. For instance, in India, according to the law, rape means sexual acts by a man on a woman against her free will. But this is not a blanket statement. It has two exceptions. First is a medical procedure. And second, sexual acts by a man on his wife, when the wife is above 18 years of age, which means marital rape is not a crime in India. And it is this provision, the second exception, that has spurred a heated debate. It has been challenged in court. It has been tested time and again, and it has fueled anger and confusion. And now, for the first time, the government of India has gone on record and defended their stance. The Home Ministry has submitted an affidavit to the Supreme Court of India. Let me tell you what it says, and I'm quoting, A husband certainly does not have any fundamental right to violate the consent of the wife. However, attracting the crime in the nature of rape can be arguably considered to be excessively harsh and therefore disproportionate. In other words, criminalizing marital rape will be excessively harsh. No matter where you stand on this issue, I assume you have strong opinions. So let's look at both sides. Why is calling marital rape rape excessively harsh? The government has given three reasons. First, marriage is a relationship, but it has a so-called different class. And criminalizing marital rape can, can disturb the marriage. That's the first reason they've given. Second reason, in a marriage, sex is implied, so consent can be assumed. And third reason, there are existing laws that deal with domestic violence. They cover sexual assault, so we don't need a separate one for marital rape. These are the three main arguments. But unsurprisingly, they have been widely criticized. Let's go point by point. First, disturbance of marriage. Now, if rape does not disturb your relationship, what does? Just the law that criminalizes it? Violence within marriage is rampant in India. One in three married women experience some kind of violence from their husbands, and one in 25 women face sexual violence like marital rape. In the world's most populous country, that means 26 million women face sexual violence at the hands of their husbands. We want to uphold the so-called sanctity of marriage. So should women simply continue to endure the abuse? Now let's come to the second argument, that consent for sex is assumed in a marriage. Yes, in matters of sexual abuse, consent is a legal gray area, but the assumption effectively strips women of their agency. They feel that saying no is taboo. And the result is this, 90% women who endure sexual violence in a marriage do not seek help, often because they themselves do not recognize it as a crime. They see it as a husband's right. Now let's come to the third argument, the existing laws. Yes, marital rape is addressed in the Domestic Violence Act, but do you know what the punishment is? Protection orders judicial separation and monetary compensation. There are no criminal penalties. How is this okay? Marital rape is a crime in more than 100 countries in our world, including Britain, which gave us this colonial law in the first place. But India is still among the three dozen countries where marital rape is not criminalized. You may have heard of some of the other members of this club, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Saudi Arabia. So yes, this is a complicated issue. But do you know what's simple? The basic question that we answered a few minutes ago, forced sex is rape, regardless of who commits it. A family member, a hus husband or a stranger, forced sex is rape no matter where it happens. Within a marriage, outside the marriage, at home, at work, anywhere, rape is rape, with or without the adjective that you attach to it. So not criminalizing marital rape does not save a marriage. It only saves the perpetrators. First Post decodes the U.S. election, explains how America chooses its president, your primer on the race to the White House, everything you need to know about how America votes, and its global implications. U.S. election explained every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.